Intel's Nova Lake is looking very good indeed. And in this video, I want to talk to you guys about some interesting leaks that have been popping up, some things that I'm hearing, mostly regarding performance and pricing, because that's going to be a bit of a mixed bag. And quite frankly, there is a lot of stuff to go through. Now, Intel have had a hit and miss history over the past several of its CPU generations. We've had some standout CPUs. The 265K right now is pretty good in terms of price to performance ratio. But overall, I think we can all agree that AMD have had a technology advantage. Not only has the X3D cache of their Ryzen lineup just been absolutely amazing for performance, particularly for games, but also just the chiplet nature that it's embraced quite early on. It's meant that basically speaking, it has a lot more flexibility. And while Intel has its tile base stuff it's not really been used in the same way for its desktop lineup but things are changing so um one thing i want to start out with is regarding the blc now this is basically intel's way of competing with amd's x3d cache and notice here that jakin is stating that it's only going to be the BLLC is only going to be available on unlock SKUs. Now this is going to be up to 144 megabytes, but it's apparently going to be actually integrated directly into the compute tile, kind of. Now what's really interesting about this is there has been a lot of backwards and forwards. I've personally heard that there were going to be two um, of these kind of cache benefiting uh, compute tiles and that would mean of course you've got 288 megabytes of this stuff but there's also been reports like from jakin that this is actually not the case and i've been digging into my own sources this is why i'm basically a day late now reporting this and from what i can tell and i'm again they are rumors but i am hearing that this is actually correct intel are only using a single cache tile and we'll get to why in just a moment because there is actually a pretty big reason now, further to this, he also adds that it doesn't seem to be for the Ultra 9s. It only seems to be for basically the lower end variants. And this is going to be the, the, the CPUs that Intel allegedly are going to be pushing more towards gaming. Now, before we go any further, I'm going to bring up this document here. Well, not that one. That's That was what I was messing around with the script. There we go. Now, these are some notes that I want to take because I've been compiling some. So let's go through this uh, in order, shall we? Now, I also will bring up this article. Where are you from? Um, from a, uh, from uh, video cards, and here we can see that the current uh, estimates for Intel's Nova Lake are 52 cores total. That's 16 performance cores, 32 E cores, and four LP cores. Now. Basically speaking, Intel have actually at uh, this point confirmed the core names. So we have confirmation that we have Arctic Wolf and also, of course, Coyote Cove, with the latter being the performance cores. So that's pretty good. So I'm going to go back to this particular document here. Now, I've been told that we're looking at at least a 15% IPC gain for Coyote Cove. That is without APX being brought into the equation. As for clock frequencies, at this point, no one's being too certain exactly what the clock frequencies are. It's too early. I don't even think that we can really make a good prediction for Zen 6 slash producer either. You know, everyone's had guesses and there's been you know, leaks here or there. I'm still thinking that Zen 6 Medusa is probably going to hit like 6.2, 6.3 gigahertz, maybe a little bit higher, a little bit lower, depending. It's very difficult to note at this point. The thing is, Technically speaking, the silicon could, the, the very premium silicon could maybe be capable of doing better. But what silicon is going to get diverted for specific variants, you know, like obviously there are a lot of markets at the moment that, in, that AMD are serving that outside of just, well, desktop processors. Let's just put it that way. As for the E cores, again, those are Arctic Wolf. I'm hearing that those are really, really good, but I haven't been able to get an actual solid IPC num uh, number. So again, dual B BLLC isn't planned and costs are a big problem. The number of 144 megabytes is correct. Again, Jenkins thinks that it's only the mid-range SKUs, and you'll see why I'm putting air quotes on our mid-range in just a second, because yeah, it's the pricing. So I'm being told that these chips are going to be really expensive for the dual compute tile variant. Now, to be clear, these are chips which basically Intel are going to aim as kind of like a, a halfway house between HEDT and 
a regular consumer based chip so for example let's just take the 285k and say that the price is going to be somewhere between that at this point of course it's very difficult to know exactly where the price is um but basically it's going to be pretty expensive and the rumors as we can piece them together the blc variants will not potentially be for hedt but it does get kind of murky one source told me it does, another source has told me it doesn't, Jakin says it doesn't, so at this point, let's lean towards the highest end variants, the 52 cores does not have BLLC, and again, it seems to be only for the unlocked variants anyway. The other major uh, difference, of course, between a HEDT chip, if I can actually pronounce it, and you know just one for the mainstream again like a 285k or like a 9950x 3d am5 platform or what have you one dual channel memory i personally guys <laughs> give us give us more memory channels we used to have it so good there were free memory channels for a while for intel for example give us it back Actually, don't give us it back right now with the memory prices, actually. Coming to think of it, don't give us it back. Don't. Don't do that to us. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> yeah, maybe single channel memory for the win. Um, but yeah, being serious for a second. Yeah, so obviously the bandwidth is going to be really interesting. It's going to be very it's going to be very curious, at least in my personal opinion, to see what happens with memory, uh, different memory speeds. Now, obviously, um, the rumor is that, you know, it's going to be faster memory. I'm hearing 8,000 MTS. That seems to be the general consensus online as well for DDR5 memory support. Um, the Arrow Lake refresh, you know, we'll call it the 300 series. Uh, the rumor is, you know, and we've kind of seen some confirmations on this online. That, uh, that's going to hold uh, support 7200 mts memory that would be like for the 290k and so on so i wouldn't be surprised if 80, if 8000 mts is actually you know kind of achievable obviously it's going to depend on other things not least to which you know what your memory kit can support it'll be very curious however for me to see what slow memory so let's say 5600 or something like that all the way up to what you know it kind of suggests that say 8000 is true and even faster especially things like timing because again i think amd are also going to have some bandwidth contention issues the iod and you know there's been some changes on the iod there's been some changes on the cache and whatever else but at the end of the day yes you can have some really good i mean theoretically you have a really good uh you know cash structure it's going to be interesting you know there's a lot of rumors on exactly how the caches will work and what's it uh you know what how it deals with like um branch prediction is going to be a really big deal of course you know pre-fetching data and how um i suppose the best way of describing it is just how you know whether uh, you know the, the caches are exclusive and other bits and pieces you know all of that can help but at the end of the day even if you have you know what is it uh 48 megabytes of l3 for zen 6 for a single ccd because you've got um uh, 12 cores for the ccd for medusa and then you've got you know it's um you know uh, uh v cache as well you know that's great but you still need to grab data at the end of the day from you know main system rams it's going to be really interesting to see how uh bandwidth style these chips are and you know as you start kind of go up faster memory kits and that is definitely going to be a big deal as well if memory prices keep doing what they are because obviously memory prices are so you know so stupid at this point but anyway i'm getting slightly off topic io is also going to be another big deal um you know most users who are running like a desktop processor maybe they've got like a single gpu and you know they're pr maybe running like a capture card or something like that to do a little game streaming or um whatever else but if you are going into the hed team lineup then you know you're possibly gonna have multiple gpus and you know you've got a lot of other stuff which is eating up pcie lanes because it's not just you know the actual physical slot um you know things like nvme drives blah 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 so as you know we've already um stated we have each tile is basically eight p cores 16 uh e cores so obviously you double that for the highest end so that's 16 32 and again you've got those lp cores now this is what i was told zen 6 desktop um i'm hearing that it's going to be really close this is the prediction with nova like when it comes to gaming in particular and this one of the big reasons is blc 
The single thread performance is going to be very much application and final clock dependent. So at this point, because we don't know what the final clocks are, it's really difficult to know whether Medusa or Nova Lake is going to come out on top. Let's hypothetically say that uh, I'm just making this up for the sake of this, you know, just for this example, but let's say that Intel comes out with like six gigahertz and, you know, Zen 6 hits like 6.4, 6.5 for single thread. I think it's fair to say that there's going to be a slight advantage for AMD, but if it's the reverse, then, you know, it's going to be very, it's going to be interesting. Having said that, multi-thread, almost everyone I've spoken to are very much predicting that Intel are going to have the advantage, and they should, because, well, yeah, it is e-core spam, but those e-cores, first of all, they're still very efficient. They're very good in, you know, comparison. Again, they've, they've bolstered them significantly, and those e-cores are also really good at running certain applications. AMD, of course, does have the benefit of hyper-threading, so... Um, you know, assuming what we're hearing is true, we're going to see 24 cores, 48 threads, but um, for, uh, you know, the highest in Ryzen processors, Medusa, but uh, I think Nova Lake should have the advantage, honestly, when it comes to pure multi-threading performance. <laughs> I'm going to be really interested in the next generation. Let's just say that I think the next generation is going to be very cool. One definite benefit, though, that AMD are enjoying is that AM5 is going to run Medusa, you know, so, if you have an AM5 board right now, um, yeah, you know, you might want to upgrade it if it's kind of a crappy board, you know, you, you need better, especially if it's like, if 8000 MTS or what have you is true, and your board is not particularly good, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> it's RAM signals are being sent over by carrier pigeon, it could be worth upgrading. But, uh, you know, if that's not the limiting factor, in theory, you can just upgrade your BIOS and you're good to go. Um, so it's going to be very interesting, to be honest with you, to see what the adoption rate is. Having said that, I'm curious, and do let me know in the comments below, if you upgrade your processor, what is your general pattern? Do you, like, just upgrade everything? Because with AM4, for example... I imagine there's a lot of people who, for example, upgraded, you know, bought like a 2700X or a 1700X or maybe a 3700X, and then they're like, you know what, I can just go to a 5700X 3D or equivalent processor, and you've got, a, you know, a really nice platform, and even now, a 5800X 3D or something along those lines is absolutely fine for gaming, uh, it's just... Yeah, you might get higher minimum frame rates in, let's say, Counter-Strike 2 or what have you, but in most games, especially if you're GPU-bound, running at, like, you know, 4K or 1440p, turning on ray tracing, all that stuff, it's like, it would be better, but is it is it really going to be worth the outlay right now, especially with, like, prices just going whoop? So, yeah, you, you'll have to let me know on that one, guys. I'm very curious to hear your opinions. I will be very interested to see how Nova Lake shapes up. I do really want Intel to be competitive with this generation, or should I say this next generation, or next, next generation, since, you know, the whole refresh thing, um, because I think it's just required. It's, it's absolutely amazing how Intel used to just be, like, this behemoth company, and they've just made so many mistakes. Like, so many mistakes. Um, you know, we can go back to uh, Pentium 4 Netburst being not exactly the best decision. Um, although, to be fair, that was like them completely and utterly misreading how high the clock frequency of the CPU would scale, um, which is, you know, slightly off topic. But, um, you know, AMD have hit back a few times. You know, you had the original Athlons, like the K7s, uh, K8s with uh, Athlon 64s, you know, Socket 939 and 7... 754? Was it 754? Uh, you know, AMD and Intel kind of had this whole back and forth thing. But then Intel really got on top, as you all know. Um, and processors like, you know, the Core 2s, like the, was it the Q6600 and what have you. And obviously then they moved on to like Sandy Bridge to 2500Ks. But I think once they got onto like um, Skylake, it, they just got stuck on Skylake so long. And then AMD, they just, they just leapfrogged them. And like I said at the very beginning, Intel... The, the, AMD, sorry, the the, the tiles, the, sorry, the um, the chiplet-based nature of Zen 2 was a really big thing. It it really was industry <laughs> industry shaping, um, and that's just kind of how it is. So let's see, shall we? With that said, guys, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. If you've enjoyed it, 
It's YouTube. You know what to do. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.